Hi, I'm Denitra Hutchinson, and welcome to Columbia Matters. Well, as you can see, I'm flying solo, so Mike, if you're at home watching, we'll see you next time. We're here at Wild Lakes Community Association Slayton House to get an update on the renovations being done here in the Village Center. Speaking about development, let's learn more about the Downtown Partnership. So the Downtown Columbia Partnership uh, was formed by the legislation uh, for the revital revitalization of downtown. And, but it's really just now sort of coming into being. Um, so it's a partnership between uh, Howard Hughes, who's the predominant landowner in downtown, General Growth, um, uh, the, the, the Howard County, uh, and all, I mean, there's so many different uh, downtown constituents who make up the partnership. And the purpose is really to promote the existing and the future of downtown Columbia. Um, there's an amazing plan that's in place. It was put together four years ago, and we're just now seeing it come to life uh, with the Metropolitan over there. The new apartment buildings just uh, opened up with Whole Foods coming into the Rouse building, um, just opened up a couple months ago, and there's a lot more to come. And that's really the purpose of the partnership is to really promote and let people know uh, what all the, uh, is going to be happening here downtown in Columbia. Right. We really have a great board of directors and, and advisory committee, and, um, and that does include GGP, the hospital, the college, Kettler, How Howard Hughes, of course, the EDA, um, the Revenue Authority, and uh, Town Center, and quite another group. Uh, and, the and the Columbia Association. No, 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 and the Columbia Association, of course. Um, and, and really, it's been with the board and the advisory committee that we have worked on events such as the one today. Yeah, this is really kind of our first big uh, one first, that the partnership yeah. has put together. And it really was Mark's suggestion only about three months ago. said, hey, maybe we should do a race through downtown. It would give people a chance to see all the things that are going on downtown, both you know existing and new and in the future. And yeah. so Barb uh, you know, said, OK, I think we can do it, and pulled this together in amazingly you know quick fashion. And it's really exciting. This will be the first one and uh, first of, you know. I mean, first of many, I first hope. Of, first of many to right. come. And what's really exciting is you will actually, if you run this race every year for the next 10 years, you will literally see downtown evolve around your eyes because Absolutely. every year there will be something different happening. Next year as we run through the, uh, the Meriwether District, you should be able to see the roads under construction. Um, the following year you'll see the buildings going up and the year after that those buildings will actually be occupied. So um, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be really, it's a pretty unique opportunity to see something like that, really see a new place in the middle of this already great place. Uh, come to life. Yeah. As uh, Greg said, we're really running through the landmarks. So we're running through the current landmarks, the future landmarks. We're starting here at the mall. We're going past the Metropolitan, through Symphony Woods, the Crescent, where the building will be hop the buildings will be happening in the next couple of years through Meriwether, past Toby's, the library, and down through the lakefront path, the people tree past the restaurants, and ending up in front of Whole Foods. So. Yeah, Meriwether Post Pavilion, it's a chance for a lot of people to actually go backstage at Meriwether. That's um, right. Meriwether also is going to be undergoing a $20 million renovation starting uh, starting this coming year. So, um, and then after the race, we have the Discover Downtown Columbia Festival. So we have about 20 tents and vendors sampling from Clyde's and Champs. Um, and seasons 52 and a few others and the and hospital, the college is there yeah, and this event. There's really a lot of great energy about, uh, about downtown Columbia and, and the plan was passed four years ago but this is the year that it really is coming to life with the construction of the Metropolitan over there. Those Whole Foods again just opened uh, less than two months ago. They're doing fantastic business and you know it's really a, a community gathering place. Um, you know I go over there for lunch all the time and you, know, you always bump into somebody. It's, right. it's pretty cool. So the, the partnership um, you know like I mentioned, it was, its mission is laid out uh, in the legislation of the plan that was passed four years ago. Um, and so that includes both promoting downtown and marketing downtown. It also includes things like uh, transportation and connections and transit and promoting that downtown. Um, safety, From, security, right. beautification. Um, right. And really, as downtown Columbia develops, the partnership's role and, and responsibilities will evolve. Right. So, and, and a lot of the responsibilities will be in the safety and the beautification, et cetera, really coordinating the efforts among all of the owners so that there is a consistent overall look. Well, we actually have a website, and it is downtowncolumbiamd.com, 
And the other thing about the website, it's just not about the partnership, but really the partnership, as Greg said, is all about letting people know about what's going on downtown Columbia. So on our website is what is happening now and what is happening next. So it's a good place to go to find out everything that's going on in downtown and the surrounding Columbia area. So yeah, like us on Facebook, the, uh, then, then you get regular updates in your news feed about what's happening, all the great stuff that's happening in downtown. It shows up um, uh, through the Facebook page. No, it's ongoing. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll continue to you know, go on for as long as downtown Columbia will that's go right. on, which, you know, it's going to be many, many years. And it'll keep growing because how it grows is as more and more development happening happens, the partnership's role will grow and its revenues will grow, et cetera. So it will be an integral part working with the Columbia Association and the county in really uh, working on um, the beautification, the security, and all those kinds of things in the downtown area. Thanks, Barb and Greg. And now we're going to have an update on the Lake Kittimacwandi Pathway Loop. If you hadn't noticed, there's a lot of activity down there because it's almost open. We're also really excited about the haven on the lake. Then we're going to get an update from Dennis Matty about the Hobbit's Glen Golf Course Clubhouse. So let's get more information. I'm here to give you an update on two very important Columbia Association capital projects. Right now, I'm at Lake Kittimacwandi where about 18 months ago a public process started which will ultimately culminate in a 1.5 mile pathway around Lake Kitt. That, that's important to downtown Columbia um, to encourage um, activity, bikers, walkers, joggers, and it's been a long time coming and we're very excited. Part of that pathway work you'll see, we armored the isthmus to, um, to help prevent erosion. This was out of the three options that were part of the, pro the public process, this was the option that was the most environmentally sensitive. It includes a, a fairly long stretch of boardwalk that is above wetlands. It includes armoring the um, bank to prevent erosion. And in addition to which, there are some um, great benches that are in Kennedy Garden. There is the Maggie Brown Grove. It's been a long time coming. It's some 40 odd years that this has been in the making. And I encourage everyone to come down and take a look. It is absolutely beautiful. It's been a great summer for plant growth, and we planted some new trees and shrubs and bushes. It is just wonderful. We've now arrived at the Hobbits Glen Golf Course, where the Hobbits Glen Clubhouse is well underway. The first clubhouse was built in 1967 and was one of the first amenities in Columbia. About four years ago, the Columbia Association started thinking about replacing the clubhouse and created a comprehensive process, which included golf course members, uh, Greens Committee members, members of the general public, architects and engineers, which culminated in what's underway right now. The clubhouse that was built in 1967 was added onto several times and really wasn't put together in a way that promoted golf as much as the Columbia Association thought it could. This is a chance for the Columbia Association to create something from ground up that takes into consideration all of the various users and the residents of Columbia. We're, we're excited about this. Building the clubhouse from the ground up allowed the Columbia Association to make a number of improvements. The uh, Coho Restaurant will be back, and their space has been enlarged, which will allow larger golf outings to take place within the confines of the restaurant space, which we could not do previously. Um, it's going to open early spring of next year, and we can't wait for it to open. Thanks, Dennis. Recently, there was a shrub planting ceremony to mark the revitalization of the Longreach Village Center. Let's take a look. We're going to talk a great deal today about what we're doing and how we got here. But I want to take a moment to talk about why we're doing what we're doing. You see, many of us believed and still believe in that Jim Rouse Columbia vision. That vision where village centers are a gathering place, a place where people can meet and build community. And I know that many of us have been concerned about long reach as of late. And I can't tell you how good I feel about the bold and innovative step that we've taken as a community to come together to ensure that we not only
turn the page on Rouse's vision for Columbia, but continue writing that next chapter. In Howard County, we come up with solutions that work together with different partners, and we're thrilled to be here with the arts community. We're thrilled to be here with the merchants in Long Beach Village Center and with the residents in Long Beach Village Center. We are going together to come up with the vision for Long Reach going forward that honors the Long Reach Village Center of the past. And as a teenager, I spent a lot of time in the Long Reach Village Center. It was a vibrant and beautiful and fun place. It will be that again, and we will work together to make sure that we get there with all of your The present decision of the Howard County government to purchase the Long Beach Village Center is an outside of the box initiative. And it is my understanding that the plans to follow will introduce a new concept to the typical village center model for Columbia. We all know that a new and outside of the box concept is what brought about the, the community of Columbia. The Columbia Association looks forward to working closely with the Howard County government to ensure a long and prosperous future for the Long Beach Village Center. Over the years, the retail environment has changed, particularly around our village. We see increasingly other shopping centers and big box stores um, that have really kind of sapped the vitality out, out of our village center. Uh, this model worked very well early on in Columbia's history, but we need a new model. And now, thanks to the uh, visionary initiative by our county council and our uh, county executive, we have a chance to make that a reality. We celebrate the courage of all of those who did not abandon the village of Longreach, but are here today because of hope in the future uh, together. And I also want to say just a very quick word about the power of unity. Because to see the government, uh, the arts community, the faith community, uh, all come together, the academic community, all come together to build something powerful and strong and unique right here in the village of, of Longreach is something I think for all of us to behold. We are so delighted to be here and, and very excited. We um, started work, working very closely with Celebration Church and Hobby Art Center and Longreach um, Village um, Board. Several months ago in preparation of this, we've um, Got exciting plans for the future. So now we have a ceremonial cleat tree planting that we're going to do right over here. Yeah. 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 Joining me now on his own home turf is the Wild Lake Community Association Board of Directors Chair Kevin McAlilly, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about the redevelopment of the Wild Lake Village Center. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Denise. So there is a lot going on outside this window. Oh, yes. So talk a little bit about, if you don't mind, about the redevelopment of Wild Lake. I know that people want to know. Everyone wants to know. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I go now, people are asking, what's going on in Wild Lake? Wild Lake is in the middle of a redevelopment. The Village Association has taken all the ideas from the community members, the elected officials, from anyone and everyone that has a say in the community. And we've put together a very, very nice plan. What's happening right now is that the giant grocery store that was the focus, the focal point. I remember of the giant. The Center, mm -hmm. It has been torn down. And what it has done is it's opened up this incredible uh, view of the village center. The village center was always there. We've had this grassy knoll and a water fountain. We've right. had this spectacular center area. The vibrancy of the Village Center has returned now. And with the construction that is happening right now, we have a brand new CVS building that's going in. It's a uh, pharmacy, 24-hour building. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the new David's Market. David's oh. Market is the replacement for what was the grocery store. Okay. The melting Pot is returning. Hunan Family Restaurant is coming back. We actually have Curry and Kebab, a fantastic restaurant everyone has to visit. And then uh, the Fish Market is here. Oh, good. Uh, uh, Bagel Bin has remained. Mm -hmm. They've just gone through this incredible remake. So we have all of these repeat restaurants that are going to be here. Plus, we have room for brand new tenants. We've oh, reconstructed the upper levels of all the buildings. 
the bottom levels are being re remade. Uh, the barber shop is still here. We have the uh, pizza place. What about pizza that place? One? Pizza Bowl is pizza still Bowl. here. Pizza Bowl. Okay, good. So you have all of these places and new ones coming in, and we have a brand new five-story. Uh, apartment complex with grade A apartments coming in. Will there sure. be ample parking for the people who want to drive to the village who don't live in the five-story building? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. I'd love everyone to come back to the village almost immediately. We have parking available. What we've actually done now is put in pervious pavers. Water, as the storms hit, the water trickles through the pavers and into receptacles underneath the parking garage. Uh -huh. We're all working together to make sure that Everyone has this vibrant location where you can walk to, where you can bike to. Uh, Slayton House is the Village Center Theater. We have uh, all types of activities going on here on a regular basis. Right. I'd like to invite everyone to come to the art shows that are at the Benice Kish uh, Art Gallery right here in Slayton House. Uh, if you look around the room, we have in, in beautiful pictures, mm -hmm. beautiful images that are always on the walls. The public uses our facilities on a regular basis. Everything's open for business. Well, thank you, uh, Kevin, so much for, for joining us and updating us all on the redevelopment of Wild Lake. It was very informative. Thank you for having me. It was a wonderful visit. Thank you. Good. So from the village of Wild Lake to the village in Howard. What's the village of Howard, you ask? We're going to learn more in this next clip. The Maryland Department of Aging projects that the senior population in Howard County will rise to 20% by 2020. Living independently and aging in place is very important to seniors. Joining me today is Mary McGraw to talk about the village in Howard. Hi, Mary. Hi, how are you? Fine, good. Tell me about the village in Howard. Okay, the village in Howard is a community of like-minded citizens who have come together to help each other age in place, which means age in their home, whether that home is a condo, an apartment, a townhouse, or a, a single family home. And it is actually a movement that started in Beacon Hill in Boston, Massachusetts in 2001. That was the first village. And I can say that all the villages are, are patterned after that village, but all villages are different because they're set up to, su to suit the circumstances of where they are located. So we started the village here in Howard. We actually, myself and a group of about 10 to 12 other people have been working on getting this started since November of 2012. And on November 1st of this year, we had our open house, which was located in an office in Winter Growth, which is next to the Florence Baines Center, and uh, we are ready to now to have members and to have volunteers and to open the village and get started on being a part of the nonprofit community here in the county. Tell us a little bit about how the village works. Okay, the village works, we, we are a membership organization. We are a nonprofit. Okay, but we are a membership organization and we are incorporated. We have bylaws and are incorporated. It works through volunteerism. We need volunteers to go they will go to pe older people's homes who are our members and they will do tasks for them which have gotten difficult to do as they've aged. Um, I can remember a neighbor of mine, I, somebody had to take her trash out. I mean, yes, she had a pile of trash, but she was not capable of carrying it from her porch to where the trash pickup was. Or also you can have light bulbs that you can't, like the one in the, in, the, in the master closet, I can't reach it. I have to go to the basement to get a ladder, take the ladder up to the second floor just to change a light bulb. And as you age, those things get difficult. And so that is what the village is there for. We're also there if someone needs a ride to the doctor. Okay, as people get older, they have to stop driving and they need rides because being uh, in solitude, being by themselves can be a real detriment to the older population. They need to get out and be able to go places and be with other people. So that's an important function too. How do you get a membership? Well, one way to do it is to go visit our website. That website is www.thevillageinhoward.org. And you put that in as one long word with no breaks. And when you go there, there will be a membership application that you can either fill out online, or if you're not comfortable doing that, you can fill it out yourself and mail it in 
Our offices are located in the Winter Growth building, which is next to the Florence Bain Center. And we have a little room there, which they have generously given to us to use for our offices. Um, we're going to be open. We are open right now for the month of November, four hours a day from 10 to 2 on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So if you want to come to the office, turn it, get an application, fill one out, we will hopefully have someone there. We are right at this moment having phones hooked up, so I can't give you a phone number yet. But w as soon as we do have a phone number, we'll start publicizing it so people can call in. You're going to have a lot of volunteers, and I'd like to know if they will be subject to background checks. Volunteers, yes, will be vetted. Um, they will be have a, a, a criminal background check done on them. And also, if they're driving, we will also do a driving record check to see that their, their driving record is clean. Um, they'll also be trained by, we will have a volunteer coordinator who will train people on how to talk to our uh, membership, how to deliver the services. Uh, they will sign a confidentiality agreement that what they see and hear while they're d doing the volunteer work stays, stays there. Um, that we are not going to start services till January 1st. You can sign up to be a volunteer, you can sign up now to be a member, but services don't start until January 1st, 2015. Are there different levels of membership? Yes, there are. We have two different membership levels. One is an associate member, and the other one is a full member. Well, living independently and aging in place is very important to our Howard County seniors. Thank you so much for telling us about the village in Howard. Well, thank you for having me. So we're going to head over next to talk to Barbara Kellner about a new exhibit at the Columbia Archives. It's called Columbia It Is. November was proclaimed Columbia It Is Month by the Howard County Executive and the Howard County Council. It recognizes the day 50 years ago that the plan for Columbia was announced. On November 11, 1964, at 3 p.m., James Rouse and his team met with the county commissioners in the press right here at the Howard County Courthouse. The invited guests stood around a large 3D proposed model of town center and the first residential village, Wild Lake. The guests were given burlap-covered books that explained the plan in detail. This was one year since the announcement that the Rouse Company had purchased the acreage and planned to build a city. The year was spent mapping and designing and looking at all the ways that a city could be planned to meet the needs of people and meet the challenges of growth. The idea of a city of 100,000 in rural Howard County understandably met with some concerns and questions but the company was ready to answer those questions with information and lots and lots of details. It takes a lot of research to put together the exhibit. I started with Mail by Month. This is a collection of carbon paper copies of all the outgoing correspondence of Jim Rouse. It gave me the basic idea of the timeline of events. Meetings with consultants, responses to reports, reporting to investors, brainstorming with the team. It's clear from the sheer magnitude of documents that it was a busy time, even a chaotic time. Look at Jim Rouse's schedule, every day filled with appointments from morning to night. Mort Hoppenfeld, Bob Tenenbaum, and other architects and planners were busy mapping and designing. The work group was meeting, writing reports, bringing ideas to the table. A company was hired to survey Howard County residents about how they felt about the growth. And newspapers and magazines were intrigued by the story and contacting the public relations office. Come to Columbia Archives at 7 o'clock on November 11th for the special opening reception for this exhibit. If you can't make it, the exhibit will be up for several months, and you may visit during Columbia Archives regular hours, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. We hope to see you here. Thanks, Barbara. Well, I learned a lot from this show, and I hope you did too. 
Until then, we'll see you next time. And thanks for watching. We're fun. We're excellent. We're inclusive. We are trustworthy. We're connected.